Christ is risen. Okay, so next time that we say all the same words at the same time, I say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. You say, Christ, Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. We had a lot of he's and a lot of Christ. Everybody looked, you know, discombobulated. Let's try that again, okay? Just cut that scene from the live stream. Great. <laughs> Alleluia, Christ is risen. Wonderful. Thank you. Happy Easter, everybody. Um, as you recall, about the time I started here, we were in the Easter season, and I hollered that a lot. Um, and I intend to today, so be ready, okay? It's not in the bulletin. It's going to be fun. And speaking of not in the bulletin, um, I've already caused chaos upstairs with the media center, but we are going to change our order of service. Ah, Lutherans, we don't change. Yes, we do. We are going to put the children's sermon after the gospel lesson. That is the only change. Jesus loves me in the children's sermon after the gospel lesson. For the kids, are you listening, kids who come up for children's sermon? Listen to the gospel. There's going to be a quiz. All right. There you go. And speaking of quizzes, Judy, would you come up here, please, for a moment? She doesn't know about this, so there's another change. <gasps> so it has been 42 bazillion years um, that Judy has been our music director. As you know, we have recently uh, hired a new music director. I won't say to replace Judy because there's no replacing her. Um, but offic officially, our new music director starts um, tomorrow. And officially, your last day is today although we're going to keep you working through April, I'm sure. Anyway, I just thought we should give it up for 42 years of her serving here. <laughs> Go ahead, you sit down. She said, that's where I got all this white hair. <clears throat> I don't doubt it. Have you met our choir? Oh. No, just kidding, choir. Just kidding. Um, I also want, there's two other thanks I want to give. We don't normally get crazy during this part of the service, but, you know, what the heck, it's Easter. Uh, two other thanks I want to give. This has been a marathon week when it comes to worship um, and everything that has gone on here in this place. There are a bunch of you who are here today, and I want to thank you, thank you, thank you. Those who are not here today who might be watching from home or taking, you know, uh, have collapsed from exhaustion, thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for all the help, whether worship assistants, preparing bulletins, making sure things were where they were supposed to be or went out live, um, all of that. Thank you uh, for um, all of that. And also, the last thanks, and then I will sit down, you don't have to applaud at that, um, Thank you to the breakfast crew. Wonderful breakfast, as usual. I think twice a year just isn't enough. Let's prepare for worship with the prelude. Yes. No.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. God's steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is our strength and might. Today the Lord has become our salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is God's handiwork, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please rise for the thanksgiving for back. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, and by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of a new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and merciful, you are the river of life, you are the everlasting wellspring. In, the, in mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! We continue with the hymn of praise. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with the lesson. <clears throat> A reading from Acts, chapter 10. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is, is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. 
We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from 1 Corinthians, chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which you are also being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether, that, whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rise for the gospel acclamation. Gospel. Today I invite you to close your bulletins because they're not going to do you a bit of good. Um, we are reading from the Gospel of Mark today and the word was first shared in, by speaking. So today you hear the word by my proclaiming it. The Holy Gospel according to Mark from the 16th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Kids, listen, there'll be a quiz. <clears throat> When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Do not be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone, because they were afraid. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. And I invite you to join in singing Jesus Loves Me as the kids come forward for the children's sermon. hear that voice of God that says, use the microphone. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Good. Are you? Are you awake? Yeah. Are you? Really? Okay. 
So, are you ready for your quiz? No. Did you listen to that gospel reading that I just shared? Yeah. You did? Good, good. That's the story, according to Mark, of the resurrection, right? The women went to the tomb, and it was empty, right? And we heard, heard them talk to a messenger, right? And then, and then they ran away, thrilled and excited and scared. Who's missing from that story? Jesus. Jesus isn't mentioned in the Easter resurrection story. What's up with that? It's like God is telling us a joke, right? Knock, knock. Oh, come on. Knock, knock. Who's there? Not Jesus. <laughs> Isn't? Oh, you don't have to say not Jesus who. Yes. It's, I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> Please call my agent for different bookings. Yeah. <laughs> when he's like, yeah, you definitely need it. Yeah. <laughs> so where is Jesus? Um, he has risen. He is risen, yes. And you, well, you were pointing up, yes. He's at Ashland's house sleeping on the bed. He's at Ashland's house, yes. Well, in a way he is. And where else is Jesus? Everywhere. In heaven. Here, behind me, yes. In everywhere. heaven, everywhere. In yes, in our hearts, yes, everywhere. And that's one of the really good pieces of good news about the resurrection is Jesus is raised and he is everywhere and he is with us always. We get to celebrate that all the time. Pretty cool, huh? Mm -hmm. And that's even better than my joke. Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. Fold your hands. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Thank, you thank you for today, for today. and for this good news. Let us walk with you always. Let us walk with you always. Amen. Amen. All right, let's stand up. And congregation, you may remain seated as we bless these kids. Turn face the congregation. Children of God, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. Go back to your seats. Now, if we were at Bible study, <clears throat> I would tell you that the last chapter of Mark's gospel is a complete mess as far as manuscripts go. Mark, the author of the gospel, um, seems to have stopped at verse 8. And we're not entirely sure why. Maybe the scroll broke off there. Maybe there were fresh donuts at the local bakery that he had to get to. He got distracted by a squirrel. Or, I, I don't know. We just don't know what happens. Now, if you look in your Bibles, you will see there are more words in there. Um, but the language changes. The verbiage changes. So it seems to be written by at least one other author, there are probably two, maybe three additional endings as people try to tell the rest of the story. Um, some, feels that we should, some feel we should end at verse 8 where I did our reading today because that seems to be the end of what Mark wrote, um, but it also goes along with the beginning of Mark. He says, the beginning of the good news. And he ends with the good news that the tomb is empty. So it makes sense for the way he starts and the way he ends his gospel. But we're not in Bible study, so I won't tell you all of that. <clears throat> but let me tell you about something else that is amazing and affirming for us this day. Mark shares... So the women went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. 1,500 years before Luther, and the women, we discover, are Lutherans. Because they heard the best news ever and did not tell a soul. 
Think about that for a minute. And, and that goes against people's nature. Not to tell someone uh, news, especially when it's good news. Or gossip, right? Gossip travels around even faster. Um, but when it's really good news, we do uh, like to share it. We dish, we tell, we probably start to annoy folks by telling it so much. For example, think of someone you know who just got a new car. They, they might tell you about it a time or two. Maybe they just had a grandchild or two. They come in sets now. Who the thunk? Um, or someone who just went on a really great trip. Of course they're going to tell you about it. Nowadays they can pull out their phone and show you pictures, which I think will be great when my grandchild arrives. <laughs> People will be avoiding me for another reason now. <laughs> they might tell you about some of the hassles, some of the problems, how much the car cost, how long the trip took, you know, you got held up in this line or whatever, but ultimately you'll hear about what a great thing their news is that they want to tell you about. <clears throat> but look at us. Today, we gather here. Most of us driving only 10 or 20 minutes or 20 hours. We have a couple of folks from uh, maybe even more than that. Um, you'll be here for 75 minutes or so, longer if you came for breakfast and time for chit-chat afterwards. And then we'll go home after hearing the best good news ever about what God has done for us. And most likely, we will tell no one. Not that we have anything to be afraid about, right? Like the women that first Easter day, they were overwhelmed, surprised, uh, afraid, um, even shocked at the news, at what they had discovered. Perhaps we've heard it too often, too much, um, that we aren't so surprised or get caught up in the excitement of it all anymore. So why don't they tell anyone about it right away? Well, they are afraid or mind-boggled or astounded. I mean, it's pretty much an amazing thing that God has done here, raising Jesus. They would say they didn't have a clue, although... When we read the gospel, Jesus gave them a few clues. They do, though, finally get it, um, which they didn't throughout all of Mark's gospel. And when they do start to act and to tell in Jesus' name, powerful things happen. People come to believe. The sick are healed. Uh, miracles happen. Prayers are answered. Preaching is done powerfully by a bunch of guys who were just fishermen and laborers. And it is great. They went through a lot. But this good news, this good news was worth it. How about us? Who will you tell? How will you live differently today because of Jesus' saving act for you? How will you be different because of him. Today is about Jesus, you know. The candy, the eggs, the family dinners um, are all ways that we have come up with to, to help celebrate this day, to celebrate that which is most important, Jesus. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Let your alleluias continue throughout the day, throughout the week, and every day as Jesus has acted for you, made his claim on you, and sends you out different, saved, redeemed, blessed because of this saving act. Amen.
please join in the reading of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and a life for the world to come. Amen. Please sit or kneel for the prayers. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church. Where the church is persecuted, protect it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world, God of grace. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope. God of grace. Merciful God, we pray for all people and nations, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. We lift in prayer this day Alfred Stevenson, Dylan Hornbeck, and Ryan Query. God of grace. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stone that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling with illness or injury, especially Bob Laib, Melissa Winslow, Tom Yusko, and those we name aloud or within our hearts. God of grace. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith, especially the Farwell family, the Fork family, and the Harris family, and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. God of grace. Eternal God, we remember those who have gone before us in death. Renew our trust in your promises that we may live with joyful courage and compassion. God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also you. Please share a sign of peace with one another.
Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it. Sit down. It might be Easter. It might be time for the offertory, but it's the fifth Sunday, and we have to do the noisy offering. So, here we go. People are coming up the aisle. There you, you can hear it. It's starting. Come on. There are two kinds of Muppets, if you ever watch. One is an order Muppet, and the other is the chaos Muppet. Oh, that's pretty good that we're up here, because I would be the chaos Muppet. <laughs> and we need a little chaos, so. There we go. Okay, now let's rise and sing the offertory. Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. 
Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for your words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. <clears throat> Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we pray together as Jesus taught, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. All who gather for worship this day are welcome at our Lord's table. I invite you to follow the usher's direction. Come forward. I will have the bread in the wafers. Um, please receive one of those. Go to the assistant who will have a chalice of wine that is the darker and a chalice of grape juice. Um, dip uh, your wafer into one of those and then you may return to your seats by the side aisle. If you wish to have a blessing instead of Holy Communion, please just let me know um, as you come forward. And for those who are communing uh, with this service at home, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. <clears throat> the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ.
Those who are able, please rise. <clears throat> With those joining us, um, Deb, Sandy, Gretchen, uh, Dor Dor Dorlee, sorry, uh, Beattie, Warren, Anne, and all those others, may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We have a few announcements to share this morning. Oh, maybe just one. Oh, no, two. Do we hear three? <laughs> Only one. At the lectern. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, next weekend, Phil and I won't be here as we'll be in the Columbia, Maryland area celebrating our baby, our daughter's um, wedding. <laughs> <laughs> so if you could keep Sarah and Danny in your thoughts and prayers this week, that all goes well next weekend, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, we had some donations for the, the breakfast today. That, along with the noisy offering, will go to UNICEF for the children who are, well, they have to face war. Glad that we don't. And again, thanks to everyone who has made our worship this week um, joyful and prayerful and meaningful for us all. Please rise for the benediction. <clears throat> Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is printed in the bulletin and the words will be on the screen.
Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Alleluia! Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad! Thanks, Thanks be to God! God.